Ladies and gentlemen, in its first two decades, the age of nuclear energy has been full of fear, yet never empty of hope. Today, the fear is a little less and the hope a little greater. For the first time, we have been able to reach an agreement which can limit the dangers of this age. The agreement itself is limited, but its message of hope has been heard and understood not only by the peoples of the three originating nations, but by the peoples and governments of the hundred other countries that have signed. This treaty is the first fruit of labors in which multitudes have shared, citizens, legislators, statesmen, diplomats, and soldiers too. Soberly and unremittingly, this nation, but never this nation alone, has sought the doorway to effective disarmament and to a world where peace is secure. Today we have a beginning, and it is right for us to acknowledge all whose work across the years have helped to make this beginning possible. What the future will bring, no one of us can know. This first fruit of hope may or may not be followed by larger harvests. Even this limited treaty, great as it is with promise, can survive only if it has from others the determined support in letter and in spirit, which I hereby pledge on behalf of the United States. If this treaty fails, it will not be our doing. And even if it fails, we shall not regret that we have made this clear and honorable national commitment to the cause of man's survival. For under this treaty, we can and must still keep our vigil in defense of freedom. But this treaty need not fail. This small step toward safety can be followed by others, longer and less limited, if also harder in the taking. <coughs> With our courage and understanding enlarged by this achievement, let us press onward in quest of man's essential desire for peace. As President of the United States, and with the advice and consent of the Senate, I now sign the instruments of ratification of this treaty.